These people, I, we, we go down to the Democrat crowds down here nicely to interview them, and they start saying they want to kill me. So Lord Moncton, you, you've always called them Nazi-like, and people overuse that, but in this case, it's really true. I don't think people realize what's happening. In fact, I, I, are they doing this because they're panicking? Are they doing this because they believe this is their time to take over? Uh, where? What is the arrogance? Is, a, is it a put-on? Is it real? You're a real psychological expert on this. I want to spend some time on powerful women in history and, and, and one of the most, uh, you know, Margaret Thatcher, an incredibly great lady who stood up to Bilderberg, who stopped the Euro early on, but after she got out, they pushed it through. I mean, you know, a true nationalist, a true, smart, amazing, eloquent woman versus these this brand of Samantha Powers and man-hating, nation-hating, wealth-hating, war-loving. I mean, it's bizarre. So I want to talk about that and also some of the latest developments. Scienceandpublicpolicy.org. Thank you so much, sir. Well, it's a pleasure to be with you. And let's let's start with women at the top in politics. What is interesting is that in uh, the United Kingdom, it was not just a member of the Conservative Party who became Britain's uh, first prime minister, but actually a real conservative, because most of the conservative party members in parliament are not really conservatives at all. But Margaret Thatcher was a conservative, and she became Britain's first woman prime minister. So the idea that somehow uh, people are opposed to Hillary Clinton just because she's a woman, I think are very far from the truth. I think they're, they're opposed to Hillary Clinton, and rightly, because she's a crook. And in law, it doesn't matter whether you're a male or a female. If you're a crook, you're a crook. And the hacked emails that are gradually coming out show that she is and was and will probably continue in office to be a crook if the people are unwise enough to elect her. And so, no, there is no prejudice against women on our side of the debate. Far from it, as you have just so uh, very eloquently said, uh, you'll elect a woman provided that she is libertarian and is in favor of peace, low taxes, and none of the hideous totalitarian experiments that you showed in that clip before this segment began. The idea that in Britain now we're using babies as fuel in hospitals. Now this, of course, is the ultimate ghastliness that even Dr. Mengele didn't think up in Nazi Germany. And what is astonishing is the lack of self-criticality on the part of the communist or fascist left, because of course the communists and the fascists are really two sides of the same hard left coin. In fact, if one goes back to China that you mentioned earlier, the early Chinese imperial philosophers said, right, uh, there are the, the big divide in politics, and it still is the big divide today, thousands of years later, is between the totalitarians, they call them the legalists, and the Confucians, we call those the liberta libertarians. So the totalitarians versus the libertarians. And now the totalitarians, now the totalitarians have learned to, to claim they're the real liberals, but they're not. No, of course they're not. I mean, the, the word liberal doesn't apply to the likes of Hillary Clinton. It doesn't apply to the so-called Democrats. Indeed, the word Democrat doesn't apply to the Democrats either. They're not Democrats. They don't believe in elections. They're merely a stepping stone on the way to total totalitarian control. You just have to look at the number of treaties that Mr. Obama has busily been trying look to put Look at the euro. Unelected. Uh, well, the euro is, euro is a good example. We, we, thank goodness, stayed out of that. I worked very, very hard to make sure that we did. Yeah, I should have um, added you're I, a major leader of that as well. And of course, it's not about credit, but it, people need to know why you're so derided and attacked. I mean, you were like a just as important as, say, our George Washington uh, in, in our beginning in this fight against the New World Order. I mean, it's epic to be able to talk to you. Well, I, about, I, mean, I, I get you everywhere, but uh, the, the truth is that these battles do have to be fought, and they have to be fought very hard because <coughs> the international totalitarian left are hoping that they can take over. Why, for instance, are these 14 attorney generals conspiring, for it is a conspiracy, to try to move against uh, that provision in your constitution which guarantees free speech by saying that those of us who are doing academic research and quite good academic research at that, say I, suggesting that they've over-egged the pudding on global warming should be locked up, should be imprisoned for daring to have a point of Incredible. view other than that of the totalitarian state. Now this takes us right back to Hitler and there's no point in in not saying so. Of course they will immediately say, oh yes, whenever the right get fed up, they say that the socialists are 
uh, you know, that Hitler was a socialist. Well, yes, he was. It National was the National socialist. socialist Workers' Party of Germany. Of course he was left-wing. That's the name of it. And then the left has lied and said he was right-wing. But let's let's expand on this briefly because I want to get back to Margaret Thatcher. I've never yeah. had you on to talk about her. And sometimes when you've got a full hour, I know we had some mix-ups today. I'd like to just spend a whole hour on her. She's so interesting when this election's over. What would Margaret Thatcher think today? I mean, you're somebody I know from reading newspaper articles that would advise her sometimes hours a day. She, you know, she really, really, uh, you were one of her main confidants. She really trusted you. She was a really smart lady. And obviously she was smart to trust you. You're a really smart guy, obviously. What type of person was Margaret Thatcher? Why was she willing to buck the entire globalist system? And why don't we see more leaders like her? Why don't we see more men like her? I think the reason is that in politics, it's much uh, government by its nature tends to be on the totalitarian rather than on the libertarian side. Government is about control sometimes for good ends, usually for bad and selfish ends, but it is about control. And therefore, there is a tendency in every governing system to move towards totalitarianism. And one of the exciting things about the constitutional developments that began in the era of Magna Carta and carried on steadily, and of course the American Revolution is part of that tradition of transferring power back from the totalitarian center and into the hands of the people. You know, the American Revolution was fundamentally a libertarian exercise, as was Magna Carta, and as was the election of Margaret Thatcher and her political triumph. These movements towards libertarianism were and are and continue to be valuable. But of course, the totalitarians don't like this. They don't like democracy. They don't like the idea that the people can have their say. They're furious that the people, by a substantial majority of more than a million votes, voted down the European Union and voted for Brexit. Why did they do? Why did we do this? Because we wanted once again to be free. I was talking to a cab driver on the way to a radio interview shortly before the vote, and he said, "I'm going to vote um, to stay in." And I said, "May I suggest why you shouldn't?" And he said, "Yes." And I told him how an EU law is made, which is exactly how the left want to make laws everywhere. No democratic input whatsoever. The whole thing done by commissars behind closed doors. And at the end of this brief account by me of how a law is actually made in the European Union, he said, right, I'm voting the other way. I'm voting to get out. And I'm going to tell all my friends they've got to do the same to save our country from this totalitarian takeover. So there is now a real battle going on, a battle which you've been uh, fighting with more than usual prescience and uh, still more than usual vigor for many decades, which is between those who wish to shut down all opposition, and this time not just on a national but on a global level, and that's the significance of Obama and his treaty making, that's the significance of Obama and China ganging up together, come on, we're all communists together, let's, let's lock the West into this climate nonsense by ratifying the uh, the uh, climate treaty now, of course, um, Obama can't actually ratify the climate treaty because your Senate has to approve it. Sure, Lord Markton, I want to get to that sure. in a moment, but since you, I yeah. was about to interrupt when you led into this, I hmm. see articles every day in the in the Economist, the Financial Times of London, the New York hmm. Times, uh, in fact, I've got the Washington Post. I've got a stack of them here. We're not here hyping the fact that this is an epic battle, literally. Science and Public Policy.org, Mark Moreno and Climate Depot, DrudgeReport.com, InfoWars, World Net Daily, Daily Caller, Breitbart are now the new media. We get more traffic than the mainstream media. They know that. They're scared. We are the, the legitimate media. We're not perfect, but we really want to tell the truth. We're nationalist. We're not into scams. We don't want to join the authoritarians. Uh, I know you could have joined them. I could have joined them. They admit that we are now defeating them at this point. They are in full crisis mode and say we must get Hillary elected. Brexit and UKIP and Nigel Farage and Lord Moncton is spreading everywhere. If the next domino falls, this is the Washington Post, we're over. The G20, as you know, is set to meet and their new focus is nationalism from, from Spain to the UK to the United States to Australia rising. They are in panic mode. So what listeners understand, we're not just sitting here telling you all this and saying we've got a fighting chance. But the enemy's going to strike back. This is epic. This, and just as you were finally able to reach that cab driver in a few minutes, wake him up with the outrageousness of the authoritarianism of the EU. What is that, 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 that blow that will finally t take them down? Because I know they're winning at some level because they're still in control and they have the money, but they're losing the, the intellectual battle. What I'm getting at is 
How are they going to strike back? What do we do, Lord Moncton? Because we are now standing in, in, in huge history. Our listeners are, are just as important as we are in history. This information war is so important, what you just illustrated. Now, we have a mechanism which is very useful in the United Kingdom. I've used it against the BBC. I've used it against government departments. It's called judicial review, administrative action. It's not particularly expensive, provided you know how to work the system. And it allows, if, if a public authority oversteps the mark, and that's what totalitarians do, they'll always go beyond what the law allows. Here is Obama saying, I'm going to ratify the climate treaty personally. Now, in Britain... If a prime minister said, I'm going to ratify a treaty, and the prime minister didn't have the power to ratify a treaty, I would be able to go straight to the court. It would take precedence over all other business of the administrative court, which is a division of the High Court in London, and say, no, she can't do that. And it would be stopped. Now, you do have a similar system in the United States, but the libertarians are not always as smart as they should be about using the existing mechanisms that are available to you to stop, for instance, outrageous oversteppings of the mark by the EPA or by Obama saying he's going to ratify a treaty he has no Sure, so what do we do then? How do we strike back? So the, what you do is you choose your issue carefully. Let us suppose that Obama does eventually try to purport to ratify personally a treaty which your constitution plainly states can only be ratified by a two-thirds majority of the Senate then all it takes is one person to go to the federal district court on judicial review and say the president has exceeded his authority and I want this looked at and then stopped. And that will bring the whole nonsense All right, let down. me expand on that. That was done by the Texas Attorney General. He was then set up and indicted, but it's a fake case. He's doing okay. Um, literally at a dinner party, he just said, talked about a company he was in years before and said, I think it's a good investment. Oh my gosh, he's so evil. The Justice Department comes after him. I'm going to skip this break, folks. It's too important. We're going to lose all the free speech if we don't do this. This, is, I mean, this battle's total. Uh, and then the Supreme Court and others ruled, okay, Obama is not allowed to just ignore law and let illegals in and not even test them for diseases. Stop. Yeah. And Obama said, I'm not stopping. What do you do at that point when he is a naked Tyrannosaurus? Well, he is then in contempt of court. And you go back to the court for an order requiring him to stop. And once That's right. Where is the Supreme Court on an injunction There's, or Congress? With that well, court order could be prosecuting Obama impeachment. If, if you go to the court and you say you've made an order, Obama has decided to flout it. If that's what's happened here, and I haven't looked at this. Well, the so word is Scalia was going to rule against him. And then, and but then, if, that's, mm -hmm. if that's what's happened, then he is in contempt of court. And if you go back to the court and you say you, you gave this order, he is ignoring it then they can issue an order for his arrest and imprisonment until he agrees to comply with the order of the court. And that's what you should do. It's not expensive. It is your right. And the court, if it sure. has made a plain judgment and he is plainly flouting it, has no choice, even if it's stacked with all his cronies, it totally. has no choice but to order his arrest. And that's what you've got to start to do. I mean, I did this a few years ago when the British government was trying to pass a thing called the Maastricht Treaty, which was the latest stage then of locking us into this EU monstrosity. And I discovered that against Parliament's instructions, they'd been spending taxpayers' money on various aspects of the Maastricht Treaty, even though we hadn't at that time ratified it. And this was contrary to the law. I took them to the Court of Session in Edinburgh, which is the equivalent of the Administrative Court in London, and the, uh, the Attorney General for Scotland, the Lord Advocate, as he's called, had to come personally to try to defend himself in court. And in the end, uh, he won on a technicality because the EU budget line 14,973 for the previous year had overruled the British Parliament's decision and the British Parliament had never read this document so it didn't even know. And on that technicality we lost the case but then they came after me for their expenses and I said no. And they said you've got to pay them because you came second and I said no I won't. Instead I want to know the date of the Lord's Advocate's proposed resignation from office. And they said, what do you mean? I said, those are my instructions. I told my solicitors, you tell them that. So they told the Lord Advocate's office that I wanted to know when he was going and to And the resign. point is, you, you made them admit that, that Al Gore's movie was a fraud, so they stopped showing it in UK schools. You've done this scores of times. Let me ask you this then. And by the way, I'll put it on screen if you didn't know, because it didn't get a lot of attention. The Supreme Court three months ago ruled 
him just ignoring law and saying the border's wide open and ordering them to ship illegals in to God knows where is illegal. He has continued. I can put the CNN on screen, Lord Boggs, and so well, you can then, see that. Then, as I say, let, let me just finish this story because when I um, told them they, uh, that he'd have to resign, they backed off and said, okay, we won't ask for our costs. They knew he was acting against the law by demanding costs from me and he couldn't get away with it or he would have gone to prison. And it's the same with Mr. Obama. If the, if the immigration decision of the Supreme Court is sufficiently clear, and if it is sufficiently clear that he is in breach of an order of the Supreme Court... It says Court, he's breaking the law. Then all you have to do, if he continues to break the law, is to go back to the Supreme Court and say he's still doing it, and ask for them to order his arrest and to be brought... Sure, and, and I mean, to first. their credit, even though Scalia was dead... Yes. The split court still said Obama was wrong. So, That's I mean, right. it's very so, clear. So what you must now do is stop simply bloviating and start acting. You have to do what I did, take them to court. And it's really simple. The mechanism in this case is that if the Supreme Court has issued an order of which he is in breach, then all any citizen has to do is to go before that court, say, here is the evidence that he is in breach, and I want it stopped. And they are then obliged to order his arrest. They are obliged to order him to attend the court, obliged to give him his chance to have his say and say why he thought it was appropriate to ignore an order of the Supreme Court. And if they are not satisfied with his explanation, and if he continues to refuse to back off, they can and should, and if you want my guess, will send him to jail. That's how you fight back against these people. Use their own mechanisms against them. I agree. I, mean, I guess I could go file it. I don't want to just bloviate here, but who should go file this? It should be a, what, a governor? Any, any citizen. Any citizen has the same right as any other citizen when there is a, a, a breach of a court order as serious as this. Any okay. citizen has. Right. Okay, Lord Boxen, we're going to go to break in a moment, of, so, so just hold for just one moment. But first, huh. I want to just add to listeners and viewers, we're in an information war. It's very important to support the broadcast, spread the word. Internet censorship is kicking in. Don't take the show or scienceandpublicpolicy.org for granted. Spread those papers, those articles. We're in an info war. Show people the facts. Take advantage of our Hillary for Prison t-shirts at cost, nine ninety five, dollars shipping included. That's at cost with shipping, nine ninety five. Bio True Selenium, amazing cofactor in the body. You must have it for electrochemical activity. Twenty percent off, based on mustard seed, the best formula out there. Vitamin Mineral Fusion, incredible multivitamin with all the amino acids and cofactors. Great tasting fruit punch, absolutely organic and natural. Twenty percent off. Infowarslife.com or call toll free eight 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 two five three three one three nine. But whatever you do. Get that Hillary for President shirt because it's shaking the media up. Okay, getting back to you, Lord Moncton. What else is on the table here? What other big events are happening? What else are we looking at that, uh, that you're tracking? Right, here is a, a very interesting one. On the 8th and 9th of September in London, at the instigation of Professor Nicholas Myrna, the world's greatest expert on sea level, who, like all of us, believes that the global warming thing has been vastly exaggerated, there is the London Climate Change Conference, starting at 9 o'clock in the morning on the 8th and 9th of September in Conway Hall, which is uh, in London. Conway Hall, you can find it on the web very easily. Just turn up on the day and come into that conference. We have professors from all over the world, leading doctors and professors of science, and we will be looking at various scientific aspects of this climate change question. I will be chairing the open session of the conference. I'll be concluding the final session on the 9th, which is the second day of the conference, by making a major announcement about errors that have been identified in the computer models that have produced these wildly exaggerated uh, predictions of global warming. These errors are serious, and once the errors are exposed, that's the end of the scare. So make sure you make your way to that climate change conference in London at the Conway Hall, uh, and that is on the 8th and the 9th of September, starting at 9 a.m. Very important you should do that. Absolutely. Let me ask you this question. It was hackers that brought out the high the decline stuff, the fact that it was all a big scam. 
it's multinationals, it's Americans, it's Brits, it's Russians, you name it. But aren't hackers really the secret weapon in all this? Because what do we have to fear? We're not doing anything wrong. But these criminals like Hillary, they've got to be really freaked out. They are running scared now, and they're running particularly scared on this climate question because the scientific argument just continues to collapse as temperatures fail to rise at anything like the previously predicted rates. And Lord Duncan, can I've got to go to break. Do, do five more minutes with us, and Nigel Farage is coming on. We're back in 70 seconds if you can, Lord Duncan. I know it's nighttime over there. I want to come back, have you finish up, and then go to Nigel Farage, the uh, former leader of UKIP. Stay with us. There's an old saying, time will tell, Lord Moncton. The more time goes on, the more he's proven dead on. It's actually scary how the research and the papers they put out, and the things they've done have been just been absolutely on target. We've got five minutes left with you. The Nigel Farage is coming on. Other points you'd like to impart to folks about the state of this attempt by the globalists to take over energy on this planet. This is very interesting, the whole climate change thing. This is a Trojan horse by which the totalitarians everywhere are hoping to get away with setting up a global profiteering oper operation, very much on the Italian fascist corporatist model where big corporations, people like Bill Gates, are brought in, people like George Soros, uh, to come out with the same left-wing totalitarian garbage and to use their corporate power to enslave us by, in Scotland's case, we were back up in Scotland just recently, the whole uh, countryside now is carpeted with these damn fool windmills which are producing electricity unreliably at five times the normal price. Um, but what is happening is that people are waking up to the fact that this just isn't happening as they said it, it, it would, which is why the Climate Change Conference on the 8th and 9th of September, open to any member of the public, is, and it's not expensive, uh, it is worth coming to. Because let's get back to these attorney general rules. These people are effectively saying we are not going to allow freedom of academic research. We are not going to allow freedom of speech. We are going to lock people up if they say things that the left-wing Democrat establishment disagrees with. Now this in fact is a very serious abuse of power on their part. And again in Britain I would have them straight in front of the court on judicial review if they tried that. And I think that what seems to be happening in America is that you do not exercise as vigorously or as often as we do the right to call your leaders, uh, particularly the left-wing ones, in front of the courts where they wildly overstep the legal mark. And that's what these attorneys general are doing. They have set up what is in effect a conspiracy to circumvent that provision of the First Amendment of the Constitution that guarantees the right of free speech. And that uh, conspiracy is illegal. It's contrary to their oaths of office, where they specifically state that they will, as the standard form of, of oath of office, uh, to serve to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. And again, any citizen has the right to go to his nearest police station and say, I want this looked at. And they will act baffled at first. You have to be very persistent because they're used to chasing after uh, people who are speeding at one mile an hour over the limit. They're not used to going after big governmental people like attorneys general. So you do have to kind of stiffen their resolve by just... Look, at how, look at how Clinton almost got taken down by people in lawsuits over Paula Jones. You're absolutely right. Well, that's exactly the thing. You mustn't sit there passively and, and just wait. Going to court is, if you target it in the right way, a lot cheaper than it sometimes seems. And it's well worthwhile getting together, you could be one to organize this, Alex, a legal fighting fund. And then people like me can be organizing you for, uh, for free and helping you out with the, the, the legal niceties of this round the back. And you can then make sure that various citizens come forward and one by one start challenging these increasingly flagrant, increasingly open... Because we've all got standing. Uh, this is designed to screw us over. We've all got standing. That's right. Everyone has standing because these are criminal matters. Remember the general rule in criminal matters, even though the Supreme Court has tried in the past to narrow the focus of who has standing in front of it, in a criminal matter... Everyone has standing because a crime is a crime not just against the state, it's against you and me. Sure. So you can always assert that. You can always go. Well, Lord Moncton, you're absolutely on target. In 30 seconds. Stop. Didn't they go too far, though, Soros, trying to round 
uh, rally folks to go kill police. I think that's where they went too far. I think people really woke up at that point. I think I think that went too far. I think Hillary Clinton has gone too far. The whole Benghazi gate thing still hasn't been settled. Uh, her emails, that still hasn't been settled. More revelations still to come, I suspect. This is a very corrupt administration where the president is openly defying the law and the Supreme Court and where the people... You're right. Lord Moncton, we're out of time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lord Moncton. Powerful.